So fintech is the application of financial technology in finance, right? The fintech sector has been existing for the last 50 years at least. Uh, finance has always been using technologies in their process, and you can see this with the creation of the ATM, which is the automatic teller machine, where you remove a person from dispensing cash and a machine could do it instead, right? Since 2007, 2008, following the financial crisis, you had two trends happening at the same time. In one, one trend was formal banks trying to deliver their operation, try to bring more efficiency, and technology is a great way of cutting costs and improving sales, right? So the fintech, fintech sector rise on that side. Then on the other side, you have the consumer sector. As technology became more and more commoditized, smaller players, startups in Silicon Valley to start with, but then eventually in New York and in London, could access technology to deliver financial services without being a financial institution. And here you have payment solution, you have mobile wallet solution, you also have credit scoring solution that are not delivered not by financial institution, but by small startups. So from a consumer perspective, they had the impression that financial technology was everywhere around them, really after 2008, because it was both delivered by formal banks also by startups. Once innovation was in the financial sector, especially in Asia, there is a very strong necessity of innovating. This is because Asia has a different starting point compared to the West. Asia has a very dynamic market. They have the highest level of growth of high net worth individuals of the middle class. They will want to be banked digitally. And previously their banking relationship was not great, so therefore there is a lot of work to be done. There is also a huge market opportunity of 1.2 billion people without bank accounts. And those people, their first relationship is going to be a digital bank, a mobile bank, delivered where they want, how they want, and very cheaply. So banks in Asia have that necessity to innovate because if they do not, they will lose a lot of our market share. McKenzie reported that if banks don't go digital in Asia, they could lose up to 30% of their revenue. However, you have another one, is that Asia is facing another form of competition, internet banks, banks which are providing financial products without being banks. And here we talked a lot of time about Google, LinkedIn, Facebook being the next banks, but who did it? China, and they did it with Tencent, Alibaba. So here what we have is that you have institutions providing banking services which were not banks, and therefore their capacity of innovating is much faster. And you have this collision course between the formal banks and the tech banks which are arriving and if the former banks want to stay in the game they will have to innovate very sharply and very quickly. So I think Asia is much more interesting when it comes to innovation. Regulator and talking about finance, you have to do this, right? I always use the example of if you lose an MP3 and an album, no one cares. If you lose one Hong Kong dollar, everyone cares, right? So regulators will always be here and they have two roles. They have a systemic role, they have to uphold financial stability and they have a consumer role. They have to protect consumers because otherwise they lose out, right? So there's that issue whereby when new players are entering the market and providing financial services without being regulated, to what extent is this posing a risk to consumers? And here you have a lot of examples about Ponzi schemes and people putting a lot of money and then losing it, and they have no recourse because you know it's an unregulated market, but also you have a systemic risk. If those Ponzi schemes become way too broad and wide, a lot of people will lose out, and this will create a contraction within the economy. Okay, So what you saw is that the trends internationally, both in the UK and the US, is that for a long time the financial technology sector, and here I'm talking about companies which are not financial institution providing financial services, so peer-to-peer -peer lending is an example. They were growing and until they were not systemic, they were not regulated. So in the UK it took about six years for the regulators to regulate the peer-to-peer -peer lending space. However, they did engage with the sector in, in between during those six years in order to ensure that they understand the sector so that when they regulate, it's done properly and you don't shut it down because you did improper regulation and compliance rules. Asia is, is different in the sense that finance is still very much a very sovereign power. In the West, we have, accept, we have accepted to privatize finance. In Asia, it's still very bank-centric, the, economic, the economics. Um, and regulators have a necessity to learn how to innovate. There are innovation offices, innovation subcommittees at different regulator bodies. So you do have that and they're working towards it and making it happen. They're not as, as forward-looking as, for example, the FCA would be in the UK. However, going forward, what you're going to start seeing is that in China, 
as they are ahead of the game when it comes to providing financial services online, they're going to be at the forefront of innovation. And here's a question of, can their regulator understand something that has never been done elsewhere before? And that's a, that's a risk that regulators in China have to start assessing is, we, if we leapfrog the market, where is our guidance going to come from? And I think Hong Kong could provide a very good guidance on that side.